Warning, viewer discretion is advised, as images or stories may be disturbing. The Bunny Skinner of Mitcham Street Everyone who does evil hates the light, and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. John 320. Beverly walked alone on the street, Mitcham Street to be exact, only having her path shined and illuminated upon by the street lamps. As the air nipped her open flesh, she gazed deeply upon her phone screen, checking for any comments on her Instagram posts. As she scrolled through, her footfalls were amplified on the concrete leaving any potential threats aware of her presence and hopefully warding them off as well, even if she wasn't intending it. By the time she turned the phone off and stuffed it into her pocket, Beverly realized that nobody was around, at least from what she could tell. The last time she looked, it was nearing one o'clock in the morning. The air was cold and dry, scratching the layers of her lungs and throat severely. She felt the empty gazes of house windows on either side of her, dry and emotionless, no pupils following her every movement. But she didn't think too in-depth about that. What was truly on her mind at that point was something a boy had said in her fifth period creative writing class. A boy she didn't care to learn the name of. While other people spoke of prompts given to them by Mrs. Lippenfree. He spoke of something awfully disturbing. Something about him hunting rabbits as a child. How he loved the rabbit's heartbeat, pound when he ushered it with the barrel of a gun. He delighted in skinning them, apparently. But she got the feeling he wasn't talking about rabbits. A brooding topic hid behind his eyes, and he was eager to explore it further. The tone of how he spoke, the fluidity of the words sliding off his tongue, the utter jeering dance his eyes gave, all of these sent a multitude of shivers down Beverly's spine. Her mind was cascaded and locked from the morbid topic stunned by her own thoughts. She could see the boy's eyes within her mind, underneath her eyelids. The boy's eyes, from what she could remember, would bl were bloodshot and glossy, directed to someone that Beverly knew very well. Her friend Tabitha fell prey to those red-rimmed eyes, filled with vein-covered blisters that were his pupils. Even, a even after a speech, she was still mortified by the boy's choice of topic. That's when it hit her. Racking over the curb and devouring her balance with the divine mechanical prowess. A car plowed straight into Beverly's back, shooting intense pain that festered under the pressure of her spine. Beverly attempted to scream, but her mind had already placed her into a deep river of subconsciousness. The power of the car forced her at least a few yards before its demonic headlights. Rimmed with a rusted mouth and covered in insect family bloodlines. As her breathing slowed, spittle tinted with tainted blood. The engine idled, patiently. Purring as the mechanical skeleton inside maintained itself on various fluids and oils. Beverly's lids fluttered over her eyes. Her vision blurred and was in constant flux. She coughed up another glop of soupy blood that stained the loose pavement. As the color of her vision turned darker as the time continued to leave her behind, she heard echoing footfalls within her vicinity, closing in with heavy-toed boots that the owner used as casing. 
Everything had slowed as the blood streamed from her mouth and nose. Her breathing was slow and ragged, a hoarse wheeze that rattled with the sound of a broken spine. The footfalls grew, grew louder with every step the owner proceeded to mock her with. Ring around the rosies, pocket full of posies, ashes, ashes, we all fall down. She heard the song faintly. Oh, well, well, well. It seems that I have run over a little bunny in the road. The voice growled in the tainted silence. Extreme pleasure filled the deep-throated gurgle. Beverly broke into a symphony of coughs, spurting blood from her green teeth as a result of a face plant on to the concrete. She could hear the veins in the predator's mouth curl and twist. Obviously a smile was occurring underneath a dead stare. She breathed gore now. It oozed from her nose and steady fluidness. It dribbled out of her mouth, clogging the spaces between her teeth as the stranger placed a strong hand upon her shoulder. Not out of kindness, but to horrendously flip her over onto her back, disrupting the clearness of Beverly's vision even more. A throbbing pain flamed in her temples. The stranger crouched over her casting a tyrannical shadow over his target for harassment. Oh, it seems that this bunny isn't doing too good. Beverly coughed again, spraying blood all over the man's distortion-formed clothes. But the man wasn't phased by the crimson cocktail dripping sluggishly off his attire. Something about his voice seemed familiar to Beverly. Like she had heard it in the settings past. The fluidness, the tone, the disturbing after air reeking off his hidden teeth. This frightened her. This fear came with a warmth. Or was that the blood seeping from her body? A subtle, subtle head tilt from the stranger alerted Beverly. She can't move. Her body was locking up from shock. Muscles were throbbing twisted and damaged beyond repair, pulsing with extreme pain. Beverly looked away from the stranger and attempted escape. She was to sudden. She couldn't escape. She was just too sudden with her movements. She winced, and her hand leapt to her chest. A willowing fire burst within. But as she tried to cry out, she could taste the man's hand clasp over her mouth. His nails dug deeply into her pebble-faced scars. The man pressed a finger against his face. His round, furry face. Wait, that wasn't a face. It was a mask. A deformed rabbit mask, equipped with matted brown fur. Vital with dried blood and hardened mud. Beverly tried to gnaw the man's hand away from her face, but it was hopeless. Her movements were getting more and more slow and confused the farther time progressed. She jerked her body, trying to keep herself awake with the little air she had, slowly being constricted by the man's grasp. Nobody heard her in their houses. Nobody heard him. They were distant in this lifeless night. She grew tired. Eyes shakily closing. The man took his hand away from her, removed his mask to reveal a fragmented blur, and stated the prayer, I pray the Lord my soul to keep. If I die before I wake, I pray the Lord my soul will take. She fell asleep not aware of the unspeakable horrors that, will, that were about to happen to her. To be continued.